forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. Like holy water on my skin. Dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. Like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears, like holy water, your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the my heart, I want to see you. I want to see you. See you, I lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Open the eyes of 
been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God seated? Oh, you already are seated. Man, my brain is fried. All right. Prayer requests and praises. Um, I had one sent to me, and I want to read it to you. It's a word of praise that was given by Richard Eckstein, and he uh, shared, if they'd like me to read this to the congregation, it's an email. Pastor John, I received good news this week about my battle with bladder tumors and cancer. After surgery to remove tumors and several rounds of treatments for cancer, my third biopsy this time showed no tumors and the cancer was gone. Please announce this week to our church members that I am cancer free. Thank you and our church family for your prayers. Praise the Lord. And please use my full name, Richard Eckstein. And so share that word of praise with you all this morning. Uh, we have a prayer request that was turned in as well. We want to pray for our homebound and our shut-ins, that the Lord would continue to strengthen them. We're praying for our food uh, distribution work, the many people that come up needing food assistance and help. We're also praying for um, Rob and Mandy. Mandy has cervical cancer, just diagnosed, so please keep Rob and his wife Mandy in your prayers as she just begins that journey with cervical cancer. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for Richard's healing, the power of your Holy Spirit that has been working in his body to bring this about to fullness. We thank you, God, for the healing touch you've placed upon many in this fellowship that allows us to come and to worship you and glorify your holy name. We give you thanks, almighty God, for the beautiful day you've given us, for seeing the signs of spring around us uh, reinvigorate us and help us to be reminded that you are indeed God and that you continue to bring new upon the land. We yield to you all the concerns of our hearts. We pray for Rob and Mandy that by the power of your spirit, you would be with them both to give them peace. And we pray for Mandy that you would bring healing upon her body and that they would celebrate this healing as a victory that you bring by the power of your Holy Spirit. We also give you, uh, pray, Almighty God, uh, for the work that we do as a congregation in feeding people. May they know and experience the blessing of your love and care each time they come up and pick up food. We pray for our homebound, that your spirit would uh, strengthen them, let them know that they are not alone today, that each uh, is loved and cared for, and though they are physically not able to come out and worship, that they are indeed uh, precious in your sight, and may your spirit move within their spirits to bring that knowledge about. We glorify you, God, with all that we say and do, and we humbly bring before you situations that are just completely beyond us, but they're not beyond you. We pray for our nation, that you'd bring healing upon the land. We pray for our military personnel, that you'd bring protection upon them as they go about their duties and rounds. We pray for all the medical professionals, that you would continue to strengthen them as they go about their service. We pray for all of those who work with children and youth. We specifically pray for our child care ministry and our children's ministries and our youth ministries, that each one would 
have the movement and power of your spirit to keep sa staff safe and healthy and strong and that each child would experience love in a very meaningful and tangible way through the mission and ministry that we provide in your name for them. But we also pray for our communities and teachers that as they are going through their next and final stages of this school year, that indeed you would continue to strengthen our teachers and protect our children and keep them well, almighty God, as they go about the, the final semester. Father, we each have brought things into this place, concerns, worries, fears, issues, challenges, some for health, some for family, work, you know them. So we yield all to you in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us for this week that you have in store for us, that we would be faithful as your servants in every relationship and each conversation. We yield it all to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Almighty God, that you would bless the words that are spoken here and the words contemplated in our hearts, that all things glorify you. In Christ's name, we have gathered and pray. Amen. The reading of God's holy word is taken from Luke, the 24th chapter. It's the very last chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And uh, this very last chapter, for those who don't know, the gospel of the writer of the Gospel of Luke is also the writer of the book of Acts. And so you have part one, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is Luke, and then the gospel of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, which is Acts. And the writer is transitioning now between this ending of the, the gospel of Luke, and now it will move forward into the book of Acts. And even though the two are not side by side in the Bible, and I don't know why they're not, because it would make more sense if they were, but Luke and Acts are connected. Chapter 24, and we're going to begin with verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. <laughs> Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me, see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as, you, bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Well, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, how many of you have life goals? Any of you do that? You know, like, I want to get a million dollars before I'm 30. Well, now that I'm 30, I want to do that by the time I'm 50, right? You know, life goals. I want to have uh, 3.5 kids and a picket fence house and a nice job that I really don't want to strangle my coworkers or bosses. You know, completely unreasonable things like that. You know, you have life goals. Well, I thought out and I thought, I have three life goals for us today, for me, my three life goals. I am going to sit down and contemplate and create a tweet that saves the world. I am going to sit down and graphically design a meme that will conquer all evil. I am going to post a snarky post on Facebook that changes everybody's attitudes. Our world's gone nuts, hasn't it? The 
tweets, the memes, the postings. Oh, I'm going to show them. I'm going to change them. I'm going to let people know the way it is. And through snarkiness and posting and tweeting, they out there bashing their own position and opinion. And, and nobody's hearts and minds are open. We're defensive, prideful. This is my opinion, my view of the world, my standing, and I'm going to let all of you know that you're all wrong because I got it right. And our world has closed its minds to one another and to any sense of truth. And I was challenged by that as I was reading this gospel. You see, the, the gospel starts normal. Jesus shows up, everybody goes, ah! freaks out. Jesus says, calm down. It's me. I'm not a ghost, right? Standard stuff. We saw this the first night. We saw it the second week. We see it now here. Jesus shows up. Poof. People freak out. Ah, it's a ghost. He's like, no, it's not. Look, hand, side. We're all good. All that's normal. I've seen that since Easter. We read it a couple times. But the line that caught me was where this, it says, and he opened their minds. How in the world did Jesus do that? It makes the resurrection look like child's play. He opened their minds. Just boom. And I was struggling with this as I see our culture and its uh, ways that our social media has closed people off from one each other and closed us off from any type of logical debate or conversation or thinking. And to this work that Jesus Christ did in opening his disciples' minds to say, okay, how does that work, God? And in that, obviously, it starts with me. Okay, what does it mean for my mind to open? Now, I mean that as a verb, an action word, not just that it's standing open, but that we continually move the door and push the door open. Every time I want to go out, I have to push that door open. And every time I want to experience a new revelation of God, that door needs pushed open over and over again. My mind needs to be opened by God. And I've come to this conversation. And in conclusion of this, I come to the place that for my mind to be truly open, it must be the mind of Christ in me. God is so much bigger than us. And if our minds are going to be opened, then our minds have to be focused on the one that is greater than us, on Jesus Christ. We will not be free. Our minds will not be free until they are slaves to the Spirit of Christ. Our minds will not be opened until they are focused on what is greater than us, which is Christ. Our minds will never be able to be open until they are God's minds. And to do that, I find that we need to take time to be with God, to focus on God. I had an interesting debate this week about quality of time versus quantity of time with children. The person saying, well, you need to spend time with your kids. Well, yeah, but is it really considered time with your kids when they're on their tablets and you're on your cell phone and the TV is playing and nobody's paying any attention to each other, but you're all in the same three floors of the house? Is that time with them? And a person was talking about quality time. It's like, you know, where we're, we're engaged and we're having conversation and we're focused on our kids. It's like, well, yeah, that's good too, but how many hours can you do that before either you or your children go insane? Right? So there's this balance that needs to come, but in all of it, I noticed that there was a, an intentionality here that in both this conversation, the parents want to do what's right for their children, and they, they want to engage with their kids in ways that, that are best and healthiest for their kids. And so they, that requires time, attention. And so for my mind to be genuinely opened by God, I have to focus on God and look to the things of God. There is absolutely no way that our hearts and minds can be opened by Christ unless we focus on what God has revealed to us through his holy word. 
the thousands of years that have been put down in writing uh, through a writing, the thousands of years that were spoken of this word before it was put down in writing, and the thousand year plus years that this has been codified as the word of God since it was together. That span of time has allowed the word and communication of God to be formulated in such a way that all that we need in order to be in a relationship with God is here. And we cannot have open hearts and minds until we focus our time and energy here, where our, we take the time to read the scripture, to focus on God. And I find that that has to be more than just what we do. I mean, just more than more than average. What I mean by that, I read this in order to prepare for sermons. I read this in order to prepare for Bible studies. I read this before I go into council meetings um, or staff meetings. But when do I read it to change my heart? When is a reading about, okay, God, shape me, change me? We can read this to do our duty or we can read it to be in a closer relationship with God so that our hearts and minds are open to God and that we can be have the mind of Christ be within us. As I reflected upon that, there were two major things that came across to me, two major principles that God wanted to speak. And one was that the humility of Christ is a part of the mind of Christ. Jesus Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, the scripture says. So there is that element of humility that God would bring to me so that my mind could be open to what God is speaking to me that day. And the second is love. Jesus Christ, while hanging on the cross, said, Father, forgive them. Not when it was a good day on a Saturday afternoon and he fed 5,000 people. No, while he was being tortured and executed on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. That love is a love that opens my mind to the greater of God. And so the humility of Christ, the love of Christ are, are essential components I find for my mind to be open and to be like Christ. If we are then the presence of Christ in our community, then we are called the, to be that presence of God, which changes and shapes and transforms others, uh, allows the opportunity for others to be transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. And so we come to, this, to our relationship with each other, and the question is asked then, well, how do we then open others' minds? And the answer is, I don't think we do. Christ does. Now, Christ might touch another person's heart and mind so that it be open to the grace and kindness and forgiveness of God through us, but indeed, that is still a God thing, that the Spirit of the living God works through us and then opens their heart and mind to others. But we can do a tremendous amount of damage to the body of Christ so that nobody's mind is opened. We can argue about everything, right? How many remember when we used to argue as Christians about the death penalty or not? How many remember we used to have arguments in churches about abortion, about LGBTQ, about human rights, about animal rights, about whatever the crisis of the day is? Uh, be, uh, Black Lives Matter or crisis at the border or uh, voter um, suppression or voter recognition. We'll fight about everything. Oh, and by the way, the church can even do it better. We'll fight about whether we should have church over here or church over there. Right? We'll argue about whether we should have, here's, here's one I get a kick out of, every single person on the praise team is going to hell. Do you know Why? They all used electronic instruments. We divided the church over whether you were allowed to have electricity in the church or not. And people said, no, 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 no. You can't have that evil organ in the church because it's run by electricity. Pianos are sacred. Electricity's bad. Sorry, you're all done. I am convinced there's going to come a day when we're going to go over and say that only bald men get to go into church and we're going to start shaving. 
I, we will argue about color of the carpet, how you light a candle, where do you stand, how do you sit. We will argue about every social issue that comes down through the day, and the church will be divided over it. There was a church in one little town. The one wanted to have a praise service. The other one didn't. So the one that wanted it went up and started their own church. Then that one divided into something else over some other issue. We will have, there are over 100 different types of Lutheran churches. There are dozens of different types of Methodist churches. Well, should we have nameplates on our pews or not? Well, let's divide over that. We're going to have the free Methodists. No nameplates for us. We're going to have the other Methodists. Oh, yeah, we'll put nameplates on our pews. North and south, we're going to fight and have a civil war as a nation. We'll divide over that. Color of our skin, we'll divide over that. Color of our skin in Philadelphia versus color of our skin in another area, we'll divide over that. That's called AME, AMEZ Church. Every single denomination you can turn to is a division of the body of Jesus Christ over some issue. Baptize when they're baby, baptize when they're adult, communion for all, including children, communion after they be confirmed. You can, I'm sure you've thought of others. We open nobody's hearts with the latest argument. We take our grounds. But what I find is that in those divisions, we take up the Bible, we search it to find the things that will support our argument, and then we take the Bible and we smack people over the head with it. See, the Bible says this. See, the Bible says that. This is my position. This is my opinion. This is where it is. I'm right. You're wrong. You're, and I'm going to show you in the Scripture where you're wrong. And we plagiarize and misuse and misquote the Holy Word of God for our own personal ego and business. What we are called to do is to read the Word of God so that the Word of God would open our heart, not to read the Word of God as a weapon against another person of the body of Jesus Christ. I have been asked over 30 years why I have never preached a sermon on the death penalty or abortion or human rights or immigration um, or animal rights or BLM, the latest one, and um, the immigration and border issues. I've never preached a sermon on any of them. Because if we do not focus on Jesus Christ, none of them will change. There is nothing that you and I or this congregation or the denomination of 11 million people of the United Methodist Church will do to change the world in any one of these issues. Nothing. Our focus and heart must be on Jesus Christ and Christ alone because Christ is the one who can change our world. Revival and renewal by the Spirit of Jesus Christ moving through our land will be the only thing that will reshape our culture to be more like Christ. And so our focus must be on the principles of faith, hope, and love of the grounding ethos of forgiveness, humility, and grace. For me, the things that I will always preach are that we are saved by grace through faith, not by works so that no one can boast. Because in that brings us a standard sense that we have to humble ourselves to each other, for we are not better than each other, for we are all saved by grace. 1 Timothy 6.12 was another one that I will always stand. Stand firm. Hold fast to the faith that you have proclaimed. We are called to be the people of God who stand fast against the evil forces of this world that would seek to use our children as weapons or tools in the latest argument. That we stand fast against the, the, the way that our world will treat people as cogs in a wheel and, and use them as political weapons that we will stand, as the scripture of the Old Testament say, for the widow, the orphan. And I'm not being literal. I'm talking about those who are the weak, the lost in our, our community. We are called to stand firm to help those who are struggling. And frankly, it needs the Spirit of God to open my mind to even see the person that's struggling because oftentimes people are really good at lying. They will put on this perfect face and be smiling, and the next day they will take their life. They will put on the, the good the outfit, and they will make it look good, and they will go home and do unspeakable things to their spouse or children. 
people are really good at hiding their true pain. I remember a woman that shared with me, it was weird, uh, it was a, a home visit, a husband and wife were there, and she said, Pastor, I, I need to share something with you. And she got really nervous, and the husband held her hand and said, it's okay, I, I trust him, I think you can tell him. And she shared about her fear. Her fear of what our world is coming to and fear for her grandchildren and that overwhelming fear. She doesn't present that. It's something she hides in her own heart and soul. And only the select few are allowed to see that spouse, pastor, closest friend. We have so many people that are hurting in our community struggling and we will never see it until our hearts are opened by christ and we can see them the way christ sees them and then be open to them and minister to them we are called to help the hurting the least the last the lost and to find out who they truly are in our circle of friends and to get beyond the political stereotypes that our culture wants to say well this is the person in struggle that's person in struggle no you know what if i have a young adult in their early 20s who's contemplating suicide i think that person whether they're white black green or orange just matters to me it should when God brings a person into my circle of existence that is broken and hurting, is that not the person that God is calling me to minister to? We are called to engage in mission and ministry to the least, the last, the lost, the hurting that are brought into our circle and to stand firm in our faith to say that will be our focus, not the latest controversy of the day, not the next issue that someone is going to make up and have a screaming yell about, whether it be the color of the carpet or the way we light the candles. No, we're going to stand firm to focus on the principles of our Christian faith that we are saved by grace through faith, that we are called to stand firm and persevere in ministry to the least, the last, and the lost, and that faith, hope, and love will remain and sustain us, and the greatest of these is love. But my heart will not be opened to another to love them until it is opened by Christ, and their heart will not be opened to love in return until it is opened by Christ. And all the arguments of the day, all the memes, all the social media posts, all the, the tweets that are out there are complete trash to the God, when compared to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our focus, our heart is on Christ. All the rest is trivial destruction of the body of Christ. Can you even begin to picture the power of the Christian church, if all were united in caring for the people who are hurting in our land, if every denomination that you can think of in Chambersburg area, if every single one were united in common purpose and common means of reaching the people that are struggling in our community, can you even begin to glimpse the power of God that could be revealed in that? And therefore, the tragedy of our being divided over secondary issues. So on my journey with this, I, I find that I can't, I can't do the Facebook thing. I can't do the, the social media pieces. They can't be my focus and my first. This is where I start. Before I even get out of bed, before I turn on any other email or app or item that I need to look at, before I look at any social media or news article, before anything else begins, I read a scripture. And I intentionally choose scripture that has nothing to do with this week's sermon or next meeting or Bible study. It has to be scripture that's just about, okay, God, here I am, change me. So I give that to you. Will you spend as much time in God's holy word as you do on social media? That might sound absolutely insane to you, but I ask you to consider it. 
to focus on what God would speak through God's holy word about shaping us if we would give at least as much time to God as we give to the world and the communication tools of the world to allow God to communicate with us. I also challenge us then to simply love one another. To find a way to love the people in our community, the people that God brings into our pathway. There is a a humorous moment because nobody died. <laughs> but there was a FedEx truck. And you you know how you know they're they're about they got to get their rounds going on right so a FedEx, so I pull up to a stoplight and there's a FedEx truck I have the red light FedEx truck is over to the left so that means they've got the green and there's another FedEx truck coming directly at us well the one coming directly at us was not stopping while it's slowing down the one to my left was going to pull out and literally you saw these two big old FedEx trucks is one pulls halfway out the other one flies around them they're both looking at each other like they're idiots and they go about their business right as I was thinking about that I was thinking about how focused we can get on simply us getting our rounds done that we forget what's going on around us I believe that God has brought someone into your life that needs you to be Christ to them. That there is somebody in your circle that God needs you to be the presence of Jesus Christ in that one person's life. And no meme or post or tweet or email or text will be Christ for them. It's you. It's me. And just like we need to take time to be with Christ in order to have the mind of Christ, we will need to take time to be with that person so that we can be Christ for them, that we can be the, an open-minded person, a servant of Jesus Christ in their journey to see and to hear them. In that scene with the FedEx trucks, they were both focused about their business. They nearly had a major catastrophe. And it reminded me so many times that when people get in our way on the roads, we just honk and then scream and yell and push them out of the way. In our real life, I don't think that's an option. We are called to be the presence of Christ and not just to set people aside, but to be genuinely open to them and to hear what they have to say, to understand what's going on in their circumstance, to pay attention and love them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's, it's so easy to send out that latest barb or post that latest thing. But to show kindness, love, and respect to another human being is where I believe Christ will allow us to be his presence in another person's life that they, by their heart first, will be reshaped by the Spirit of God, just as God has already shaped us. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would open our minds and hearts to your perfect and holy way, Help us to see others through your lens and to present ourselves in all humility before them to offer um, kindness, and grace, and peace, to simply try to be your presence in their lives. We thank you, God, for this privilege and ask you to help us so that in all things you would be glorified. Amen. When we stand, praise team is going to lead us out with one more song.
a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Lord, restore the joy I had I have wandered, bring me back In this darkness, lead me through Until all I see A soul on fire, Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire. Amen. Let's bow for the benediction. The peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding. Guard and keep us in the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God the Father, the resurrected Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. God's blessings be with you all.